Hi everyone, it's Jamie from Mel Devon Sewing and up today I'm going to run you through a little bit more of what you can do with your overlocker. If you followed my last video you'll probably have set your overlocker up now successfully and be able to thread everything. Um, this little tutorial I want to go through the various different stitches that your overlocker is capable of and actually a lot of people don't realise what the overlocker can do. So before we begin I just want to let you know how I've got my machine set. I'm using some standard cotton in the back rather than the big cones because I've got a blue, a green, a red and a yellow thread which correspond to our various parts. Blue being the left needle, green the right needle, red is our upper looper and yellow is our lower looper. It will just make it easier when we've done our uh, stitching, you can see which bit goes where. On the side of this machine, I've got my stitch length set to about two and a half, so between two and three, and the differential feed is set to one, so that's for a standard straight stitch. Okay, so the first stitch we're going to do is the four thread overlock. Um, it's a really, really strong stitch. It's brilliant for heavy seams where you know you're worried about things coming undone. As the name suggests, we're going to use all four of our threads, both needles and both loopers. And for my particular fabric, which is just a medium weight, I've got everything set to three right across and we'll stitch it up and see what it looks like. So remember don't lift your presser foot when you insert your fabric literally lift the front of the presser foot up. I've got my knife engaged at the moment so it will trim off the fabric as we go and the stitch width is set to about 3.5 okay and off we go nice and steady. So here we have the four thread overlock and as you can clearly see we have the blue left needle thread running along straight stitch. Next to it we have the green which is the right needle and then we have our red which is our upper looper on the top and if we flip it over you can see the yellow which is the lower looper. What's really important and what you're trying to achieve is for the edge the upper and lower looper okay, should meet right along the edge of this fabric. I'll go into tensions in more detail in my next video so we can rectify any problems that you may have. What's great about the four thread overlock is that it's great for garment construction. So what I mean is if this were, let's say, item of clothing you're making and we open it out obviously you can see the seam line you've got the nice overlocked edge on the inside if I give it a good pull you should just be able to see the blue threads that's our left needle thread if for some reason they were to get broken and what I'll do is I'll just snip a couple you've and you can see the seam will start to open because you're using four threads, if we now look, you can just see the green, which is the right needle coming through. So you've effectively got two rows of stitching. So if one seam were to pop open, it's being reinforced by your second seam. So four thread overlock, really good, strong. Now we're going to look at three thread overlocked seams um, and for the first three thread I'm actually going to remove our left hand needle. I've already taken the blue thread out and it's just a case of carefully undoing the small screw, don't take it all the way out, hold your needle, give your screw a couple of turns and gently drop the needle 
out of the machine. Okay, tighten up this little screw again just to make sure it doesn't fall out. So I've removed the blue thread and I've removed the left needle. All the other dials are set to three and I've just turned the tension down to zero. Really that's so I can remember that actually there's no thread in there. And we're going to overlock our edge using right needle, upper and lower looper. So as we did with our four thread overlock seam, we're just going to pop the fabric in and away we go. And here we go. So similar to the four thread, however now we've only got our upper looper in red, we can see the green thread running along which is our right hand needle and of course on the back we've got our lower looper. We can also do the three thread overlock but this time using the left hand needle or the blue thread as opposed to the right hand needle and the green thread. And this time you can see we've got left needle set to three, upper and lower looper set to three, and we've removed the green, which is our right needle, so that's set up to zero. And here we have the three thread overlock, this time using the left needle. And you can clearly see the blue thread, which is our left needle, upper looper, and of course on the reverse, you'll have the lower looper. Now if we compare our three thread left needle with our three thread right needle, you can see the difference. Obviously the left needle is further away from the edge of the fabric, so the looper width is going to be wider compared to the right hand needle which is going to be closer. Both of these finishes are great for tidying up the ends of or the edges of your fabric and um, it's not very bulky so they're really quick nice ways to finish okay so now we can move on to some exciting seams and we're going to do a flat lock and um, you quite often see it on the side of leggings or sportswear and as the name suggests it produces a really flat seam and it's ideal for those purposes. Now the machine is still set up as we did for our three stitch with our left needle okay but what we need to do is we need to adjust the tensions and this is where it can get a bit confusing. So the green which is the right needle, obviously there's no thread in there, that's set to zero. But for our left needle, we also want to set that to zero. Even though there's thread going through there, we don't want any tension in that thread, which will all become clear in a moment. Our upper looper is pretty well the same as we have been all the way through on three, but our lower looper, we're gonna roll that up to seven, eight, you just have to experiment and it depends on your fabric but let's start with about eight. So here's my pieces of fabric that I'm going to flat lock together. I'm just going to mark for clarity the wrong side of the fabric because when we sew this seam we want the wrong sides together. I know normally we, we sew with the right sides together so I'm going to place our wrong sides together. So here's our flat lock seam and I know you're going to say straight away actually it looks just like the three thread overlock there okay, that we just did and yes it does look exactly the same. The difference being the way we set our tensions on our lower looper and obviously on our blue thread means we can do this. If we take our fabric and pull it apart 
give it a good tug. It's not going to break. You've now created a lovely flat seam. And on the reverse, you can see where we marked it, you've just got a nice lather stitch on the inside. So if that was on the inside of a pair of leggings or you know sportswear, you're not gonna it's not gonna rub, it's gonna pull nice and flat. Okay. A really really good seam. Now of course you can do a flat lock seam but using the right hand needle, the green thread, okay, exactly the same settings, zero for your needle thread, three for your upper looper and you know seven, eight for your lower looper. And the only difference will be, of course, a narrower flat lock seam. Now let's have a look at a rolled hem. Rolled hems are really, really good, especially in really fine sheer fabrics. And actually this machine does a really good job of it. First though, we need to set it up correctly. And on this particular machine, there's a little slider, which we need to pull back and it moves a finger that's in, in place by the needles. Um, the way I always remember it, straight forwards, rolled back okay so we've come back we've still got our right hand needle in so our green thread and our upper and lower looper I've also adjusted our stitch length to about two we want quite a fine stitch length for this and lastly our tensions obviously we've got no left needle in so that's set to zero there's no thread in there our right needle is our standard three and what we're going to do we're just going to up our upper and lower looper we're just going to bring it up to about four you may have to experiment it may need to go a little bit higher so a rolled hem and I'm sure you can see straight away it doesn't look particularly pretty on this fabric and um, the fabric I'm using frays quite well and every now and again I'm getting an edge poking through okay but I'm going to do it again this time in a piece of chiffon just so you can see it does work so here we have a piece of chiffon which you can see is a lot better and it's got a, a much nicer rolled hem so so far we've done a variety of different seams and we've moved needles, we've used left needle, right needle, both needle and we've adjusted some of these tensions to do certain seams. On occasion you'll want to actually lose your upper looper completely and by that I don't mean just turn it down to zero I mean the thread is actually completely removed. Depending on your machine the majority come with this little this little converter and this needs to be put into position on our upper looper because we've lost the thread so here we can see the actual upper looper it's the the metal bracket with the large hole and I'm just going to remove the red thread just take it back and then remove it completely from the machine Okay, so now we're left with our lower looper thread and an empty upper looper. What we need to do is to put our converter in position and it engages into the large hole at the end of the upper looper, like so. And at the other end, you'll see a little metal bar that needs to then get put into the hole where our red thread was previously. Okay, make sure our yellow thread goes over the top. Now we can stitch just using lower looper and one thread.
we're doing a straight stitch so we're going to put our stitch finger back forwards into the straight stitch position. I'm going to put my stitch length up to sort of two and a half. For our tensions I'm using the left needle, the blue thread, so that's set to our standard three. There's no needle in the green right, so that's zero. We've lost the upper looper, so again zero. But importantly, the lower looper also goes to zero. And then we have our two thread overlock. Obviously the lower looper, the blue thread for our left needle. If we were using, of course, the right needle, you would get green thread and make a narrower um, edge. And obviously the reverse is still the lower looper and the blue thread. This is a really, really good finish. Very, very thin. It's not at all bulky. It's good for finishing off fabrics that you know, don't fray a huge amount and just to neaten everything up on the inside of a garment. Okay, finally, the last stitch I want to show you today is the super stretch stitch. And the reason I'm showing you now is we've still got our converter in place because we're not using our upper looper. But in this instance, we're using both left and right needles. Okay. Tension-wise, three, three for our needles, zero, zero for our loopers. So here we have the super stretch. This is a brilliant stitch for swimwear or leotards, you know, really stretchy material. And obviously you can see the lower looper, which goes over to the back, and then you've got the two rows for you, from your needles, the blue and the green. So there we go. Um, 10, 11 different stitches that you can try on your overlocker. So please go away and have a go, see what you can do. Remember, my machine's set up based on the thread I'm using, the different fabric I'm using, and your machine may be slightly different. Instead of using number three for your needles, you might have to use four. It's a little bit of trial and error to start with. Once you get it set, you'll be good to go. So don't forget, head over to my blog, where I'll uh, have a little surprise for overlocker users in the next few days and the next tutorial we'll do a little bit more look forward to speaking to you then